let's move on to the next quote text. It's a short story called Jeremy's First Hunt, written by Arthur Gordon. Arthur Gordon was an essayist, short story writer and novelist. He's the author of 14 books, including A Touch of Wonder, that's his best known work, Return to Wonder, and A Song Called Hope. A Touch of Wonder is his best known work. He was the former editor of Good Housekeeping, Cosmopolitan, Guidepost magazines. He has contributed to several publications like Reader's Digest, Esquire, Collier's, Saturday Evening Post, McCall's, and Red Book. So this particular short story, Jeremy's First Hunt, is taken from his collection of stories called Through Many Windows. Through Many Windows. His father said, All set, boy? And Jeremy nodded quickly, picking up his gun with awkward mittened hands. His father pushed open the door and they went out into the freezing dawn together, leaving the snug security of the shack, the warmth of the kerosene stove, the companionable smell of bacon and coffee. So obviously there are two characters, a father and a son. And, and they are going for a hunt. His father said, all set, boy. He's asking his son if everything is ready. Jeremy nodded quickly, picking up his gun with awkward mittened hands. Jeremy is the son. He picks up the gun with mittened hands. A mitten is a kind of glove. I have given a picture of a mitten. I have given a picture of two mittens. A mitten is a glove with two sections, one for the thumb and other for all four fingers. I have given a picture in the bottom right corner. It's a kind of glove. You usually use mittens for taking things out of the oven. His father pushed open the door and they went out into the freezing dawn together. What is dawn, D-A-W-N? Dawn is early morning or the first light of day. Dawn is early morning. So it's early morning and they go out together. The father and son go out together for hunting, leaving the snug security of the shack. So they were staying in a shack. What is a shack? A shack is a roughly built hut or cabin. shack. So they left the shack. Now they are going hunting. Leaving the snug security of the shack, the warmth of the kerosene stove, the companionable smell of bacon and coffee. They are leaving the snug security of the shack. Snug means comfortable, warm, etc. I've given you a picture of a shack. A shack is a temporary shed or a temporary hut. Look at the picture. So, because it's early morning, it's very cold. So, they were staying in a shack. Now, they are leaving the shack in order to hunt. What is bacon? Bacon is a kind of meat taken from the back or sides of a pig. You might have eaten it. These are thin slices of meat taken from a pig. They are fried in thin slices. It's quite delicious. They stood for a moment in front of the shack their breaths white in the icy air. Ahead of them was only the vast expanse of marsh and water and sky. Ordinarily, Jeremy would have asked his father to wait while he fussed around with his camera, trying to record 
the bleak arrangements of black and grey and silver. But not this morning. This was the morning, solemn and sacred, when 14-year-old Jeremy was to be initiated into the mystic ritual of duck shooting. You can notice several things in, his, in this paragraph. First of all, the air is very cold. It is the break of dawn. The air is very cold. And they are standing in a marsh. What is a marsh? Marsh and the Chadupunilam. It is a wet, muddy area of land. Chadupunilam. Ordinarily, um, okay. So it says ordinarily Jeremy would have asked his father to wait while he fussed around with his camera. So Jeremy is obviously interested in photography. He is interested in photography. And what kind of hunting? Are they going to do? They are going to hunt ducks. They are going to shoot ducks. These are the things we learn from this paragraph. They stood for a moment in front of the shack. They stand in front of the shed. Their breaths white in the icy air. Why are their breaths white? Because the air is very cold. Their breaths are foggy. They are almost, it is almost white in color. When the climate is very cold, when the weather is very cold, you can actually see your breath. It becomes foggy. Ahead of them was only the vast expanse of marsh and water and sky. Ahead of them, they can see marsh and water and sky. Marsh, as I told you, is a wet, muddy area of land. I have given you two pictures of marshlands. Ordinarily, Jeremy would have asked his father to wait while he fussed around with his camera. So Jeremy is interested in photography, trying to record the bleak arrangements of black and gray and silver. So when he sees the marshland, his first thought is to take a photo of the marshland. He is very much interested in photography. He wants to capture the bleak arrangements of black and gray and silver. These are the colors of the marshland, especially in, in early morning. Bleak means cold, miserable, without any vegetation, etc. But not this morning. This was the morning, solemn and sacred, when 14-year-old Jeremy was to be initiated into the mystic ritual of duck shooting. So this was a solemn and sacred morning. Solemn means very serious, very serious, very formal. Why is this morning solemn and sacred? Because it is the first time Jeremy is going duck hunting. And he is going duck hunting with his father. So it is very important to him. See? This morning is solemn and sacred because Jeremy is going duck hunting for the first time. And duck hunting is described as a mystic ritual. Mystic means spiritual, inspiring a spiritual mystery. Spiritual, ritual is a ceremony. Um, for example, a religious ritual. Ambalatri Baribad, that's a ritual. So why is duck hunting described as a mystic ritual? Because he is doing it his, with his father and it is very important to him. That is why it is described as a mystic ritual. The mystic ritual of duck shoot. And he hated it. Had hated the whole idea. Ever since his father had bought him a gun, had taught him to shoot clay pigeons, had promised him a trip to this island in the bay. But he was determined to go through with it. He loved his father, wanted more than anything in the world his approval. If only he could conduct himself properly this morning, he knew that he would get it. 
See, Jeremy hates hunting. He hates any kind of violence. He hates hunting. But then why is he going hunting with his father? In order to win the approval of his father. That is why duck hunting is so important to him. Jeremy thinks that he can only win the approval of his father if he proves to be a good hunter. Duck in a hunting and patuke anangil, achende approval kittum and nana Jeremy vijarikinan. That is why duck hunting is very important to him. So let's take a look at the paragraph. And he hated it. He hated the whole idea, the idea of hunting ever since his father had bought him a gun. So he had hated hunting ever since his father bought him a gun. Had taught him to shoot clay pigeons. His father taught him to shoot clay pigeons before shooting actual live animals. Had promised him a trip to this island in the bay. Why have they taken a trip to the island in the bay? In order to go duck hunting. But he was determined to go through with it. Still he wants to go through with duck hunting. Why? Because he loved his father. Wanted more than anything in the world his approval. He wants to hunt ducks because he loves his father and wants his father's approval. If only he could conduct himself properly this morning. He knew that he would get it. What will he get? He will get his father's approval. If he can hunt ducks properly, his father will be proud of him. So, can you answer this question? Why did Jeremy decide to go through with shooting even though he hated the whole idea? Jeremy loved his father and wanted to win his approval. That is the reason. His father loved shooting and wanted Jeremy too to go for shooting with him. Hence, Jeremy decided to go through with shooting in order to please his father. This little boy is trying to please his father. He doesn't like hunting. They came to the blind, a narrow camouflaged pit facing the bay. In it was a bench, a shelf for shotgun shells, nothing else. So these two, the father and the son, are staying in a pit. Hunters make a pit, a cam camouflaged pit, in order to hunt. What is, what do you mean by camouflage? Camouflage is concealment by means of disguise. So you can see here various examples of camouflage. Look at the leaf insect. It is a fine example of camouflage in nature. The leaf insect looks like one of the leaves. So that is very efficient camouflage. Another example, look at the owl. The owl looks exactly like the tree branch. So that is another example of camouflage. Look at the military personnel. The, the clothes worn by the military person blend in with his surroundings. That is another example of camouflage. So what is camouflage? It is concealment by means of disguise. Jeremy and his father are staying in a camouflaged pit. In it was a bench, a shelf for shotgun shells, nothing else. In the pit there was a bench and a shelf for shotgun shells. So what is a bay? A bay is a small body of water set off from the main body. I have given you a picture of a bay. It is a small strip of water separated from the river or the sea.
Jeremy sat down tensely, waited while his father waded out with an armful of decoys. Light was powering into the sky now. Far down the bay, a string of ducks went by, etched against the sunrise. Watching them, Jeremy felt his stomach contract. Jeremy sat down tensely, waited while his father waded out with an armful of decoys. To wade is to walk with effort, to walk through water with effort. What is a decoy? A decoy is an imitation animal used for hunting. Here it is an imitation duck. I have given you a picture of a decoy. So Jeremy is waiting tensely. His father is walking through water with a handful of decoys. He is planting decoys in the water. Decoys are imitation ducks used for hunting. These decoys will attract other ducks. The other ducks will think that this duck is real and they will be attracted to this decoy. Animals in attractive and you in the imitation animal on decoy. Here it is an imitation duck. Light was powering into the, into the sky now. So the sun has risen and light is powering into the sky. Far down the bay, a string of ducks went by, etched against the sunrise. The sun has risen and a string of ducks is going by. Etched means outlined clearly against the sunrise. The outline, outlines of these ducks can be seen against the sunrise. Watching them, Jeremy felt his stomach contract. Jeremy is nervous. He doesn't want to hunt. He doesn't want to shoot. That is why he is so tense. He is nervous. To ease the sense of dread, he took a picture of his father silhouetted against the quicksilver water. Then he put the camera hastily on the shelf and picked up his gun. His father came back and crouched beside him, boots dripping, hands blue with cold. Better load up. Sometimes they are on top of you before you know it. He watched Jeremy break his gun, insert the shells, close it again. I'll let you shoot first, he said. He loaded his old gu own gun with a metallic snap. You know, he said happily, I've been waiting a long time for this day, just the two of us. So they are preparing for the hunt. And from this paragraph, we know that this is a bonding time for the father and the son. His father is very happy to take his son for hunting ducks. He says he has been waiting for a long time for this day, for taking his uh, son hunting. To ease the sense of dread, dread means fear. To ease the sense of dread, he took a picture of his father silhouetted against the quicksilver water. Jeremy is still nervous. He is very anxious. He doesn't want to hunt. So, in order to calm his nerves, he takes a picture of his father silhouetted against the water. What, what do you mean by silhouette? Silhouette is the outline. The outline of something or somebody outline. He takes a picture of his father silhouetted against the quicksilver water. Quicksilver is another word for mercury. Q 
here the water looks like mercury that is why uh, he says quicksilver water so he takes a picture a photo of his father then he put the camera hastily on the shelf and picked up his gun he quickly puts his uh, camera away and picks up his gun hastily means quickly his father came back and crouched beside him boots dripping hands blue with cold the water is very cold his father's hands are blue in color because the water is very cold now the father and son are crouching what do you mean by crouching to crouch is to lower the body stance especially by bending the legs padungi irikkuva adana crouch you can see a picture of a father and son crouching in the right top corner kuningi irikkuva adana crouch The father came back and crouched beside him, boots dripping, hands blue with cold. The water is very cold. That's why his hands are blue. Better lauder. Sometimes they are on top of you before you know it. So, you better load up the gun. The ducks are coming. He watched Jeremy break his gun, insert the shells, close it again. So Jeremy inserted the bullets, the shells, and he closed the gun again. The gun is now loaded. I'll let you shoot first, he said. His father says, "I'll let you shoot first." He loaded his own gun with a metallic snap. You know, he said happily, "I've been waiting a long time for this day. Just the two of us." Father is very happy to take his son hunting. He has been waiting for a long time for this day. It is a bonding time for them. Now take a look at the two pigeons. First pigeon is asking, "What are other words for crouch? What are the answers? Squat, stoop, bow, bend, hunker down, hunker, cower, huddle, duck." hunch these are all different words for crouch these are all the synonyms of crouch words with similar meanings he broke off leaning forward eyes narrowed there's a small flight now headed this way keep your head down i'll give you the word behind them the sun had cleared the horizon flooding the marshes with tawny light jeremy could see everything with an almost unbearable clarity his father's face tense and eager the faint white frost on the gun barrel his heart was thudding wildly No he prayed don't let them come make them stay away please but they kept coming four blacks his father said one mallard so they are actually going to hunt ducks and they can see several ducks in the water he broke off leaning forward eyes narrowed His father says, "There's a small flight now headed this way. Keep your head down. I'll give you the word." So, what is a flight? Flight is a body of birds, a flock of birds. Here, it means a flight of ducks. So, a small group of ducks are coming this way. Keep your head down. Why should he keep his head down? In order to shoot the ducks. I'll give you the word. I'll tell you when to shoot the ducks. Behind them the sun had cleared the horizon flooding the marshes with tawny light tawny means orange yellowish golden almost golden color the sun had cleared the horizon horizon chakravala chakravala behind the 
behind them the sun had cleared the horizon that means the sun had risen it was now morning it flooded the marshes with tawny light the marshes were now the marsh was now a yellowish or brown color an orange color almost jeremy could see everything with an almost unbearable clarity his father's face tense and eager the faint white frost on the gun barrels so jeremy is so nervous he is so tense that he could, he could see everything with an unbearable clarity he could see everything clearly his father's face his father's face is tense and eager there is white frost on the gun barrels because it is very cold there is white frost on the gun barrel so jeremy could see everything clearly because he was so nervous he was so anxious he was afraid so he could see everything clearly his heart was thudding wildly thud means midikuva his heart was thudding wildly a thud is a dull heavy sound made by an object uh, falling to the ground endengilum thaale vilumbol undaguna sound aanu thud his heart was thudding wildly no he prayed don't let them come he doesn't want to shoot the ducks he prays do not let the ducks come make them stay away please he is praying to god to make the ducks stay away because he doesn't want to shoot but they kept coming the ducks kept coming four blacks his father said one mallard so blacks and mallard they are two different kinds of ducks i have given you the picture of a black duck and a picture of two mallard ducks the colorful duck is the male the other one is the female the mallard is the commonest duck in the northern hemisphere the male has a dark green head and white collar that is the most distinct feature of a mallard duck the color of a mallard duck's head is almost a peacock green sorry it's an emerald green not peacock green emerald green the mallard duck's head is an emerald green color the male mallard duck's head is an emerald green color please take a look at the pictures hi above jeremy heard the pulsing whistle of wings as the flight went over swung wide began to circle get set his father whispered in they came gliding down the sunlit aisles of space heads raised alertly wings set in a proud curve the mallard was leading light flashed from the iridescent feathers around his neck and glinted on his ruddy breast down dropped his bright orange feet reaching for the steel colored water closer closer so oh. Finally, the ducks are coming towards them. High above, Jeremy heard the pulsing whistle of wings as the flight went over. The group of birds have gone over them, and they are circling the water. They are swimming in circles. Finally, they can see the ducks swimming in circles. And the father says, "You should be ready to shoot. Get set." His father whispered, "You have to be ready to pull the trigger." you have to be ready to shoot in they came the ducks came gliding down the sunlit aisles of space heads raised alertly wings set in a proud curve the ducks are very alert their heads are raised alertly the heads are raised alertly alert in the malayalam word endana jagrata heads are raised alertly wings are set in a proud curve you can see the uh, curvature of the wings the curved shape of the wings 
So in they came gliding down the sunlit aisles of space. What is an aisle? An aisle is a narrow gap between two rows of seats. For example, the aisle of a church is the narrow gap between the seats in a church or the aisle uh, of a supermarket is the narrow gap between the shelves. So here you can see the ducks gliding down the aisles of space. Their heads are raised alertly, wings set in a proud curve. The ducks are coming one by one. The mallard was leading. So the first duck is a mallard. Light flashed from the iridescent feathers around his neck and glinted on his ruddy breast. What do you mean by iridescent? Iridescent is a play of lustrous changing colors. For example, an iridescent bubble. Take a look at that bubble. You can see a play of colors, a play of lustrous changing colors on that, bu on that bubble. So that bubble is iridescent. So the feathers of the duck is also iridescent. You can see a play of colors. And what do you mean by ruddy? A ruddy is a healthy red color. Healthy red color. A glint is a flash of light. A small flash of light. So, Jeremy could see the light of the sun reflected from the feathers of the duck. Remember, the neck of the mallard is an emerald green color. And Jeremy could see light reflecting from the neck of the mallard duck. Mallard duck in the culture is emerald green color. That light reflected from the and glinted on his ruddy breast. The breast of the duck is ruddy. That is, it has a healthy red color. Red colored breast down. Down dropped his bright orange feet. His feet are orange. Reaching for the steel colored water. He is dipping his feet into his beak into the water. Sorry. He is dripping his He is dipping his feet into the water and the ducks are getting closer. So the ducks swam in circles and Jeremy could see light getting reflected from the bright feathers of the duck. Now cried Jeremy's father in an explosive roar. He was on his feet, gun ready. Take him, Jeremy felt his body obey. He stood up, leaned into the gun the way his father had taught him. He felt the shock, he felt the shock cold against his cheek, so the twin muscles rise. Under his finger, the trigger curved, smooth and final and deadly. Finally, his father asked him to pull the trigger. Now, his father asked him to pull the trigger. Now, cried the Jeremy, cried Jeremy's father in an explosive roar. He says loudly, Roar and then alarcha. Roar, alarcha. He was on his feet, gun ready. He's ready to um, shoot the gun. Take him. Jeremy felt his body obey. He stood up, leaned into the gun the way his father had taught him. So he leans into the gun just like his father taught him. He felt the cold, he felt the stock cold against his cheek. The cold metal of the gun is felt against his cheek. And so the twin muscles rise. What is a muscle? A muscle is the open end of the barrel of a firearm. I have given you a picture. 
the open end of the phyrum is called a muscle you saw the twin muscles rise under his finger the trigger curved smooth and final and deadly is finally ready to shoot is going why why is it called smooth and final and deadly because when he pulls the trigger the duck is going to die his trigger is smooth and final and deadly it is going to shoot the duck in the same instant the duck saw the gunners and fled wildly up went the mallard as if chopped by an invisible string for a second he hung there poised against the wind and sun balanced between life and death shoot said something sharply in jeremy's brain and he waited for the slam of the explosion but it didn't come up went the mallard higher still until suddenly he tipped a wing caught the full force of the wind and walled away out of range so jeremy tries to shoot but he cannot do it cannot pull the trigger and what happened to the ducks the ducks flew away they went out of range in the same instant the ducks saw the gunners and flared wildly because they had waited too long the ducks saw the gunners the ducks saw the hunters and flared wildly to flare is to gradually widen in shape ducks ang parannu poi they spread their wings and moved away up went the mallard as if jerked by an invisible string nulittu valichathu pole the mallard moved as if pulled by a string a jerk is a quick sharp sudden movement a jerk a sudden movement for a second he hung there poised against the wind and sun balanced between life and death the mallard duck hung in the air it was he hung in the air poised against the wind and sun it is balanced between life and death there is a moment between life and death poised means calm marked by balance or equilibrium perfectly balanced shoot said something sharply in jeremy's brain so jeremy's brain is telling him to shoot shoot immediately before the duck gets away and he waited for the slam of the explosion is waiting for the explosion caused by the bullet what is a slam a slam is a loud sound a loud bang caused by forceful shutting of something such as a door here the slam is caused by the bullet but it didn't come he could not shoot up went the mallard higher still until suddenly he tipped a wing caught the full force of the wind and walled away out of range so the mallard caught the wind and moved out of range it flew away out of range so he couldn't shoot the duck the duck went away a whirl is a rapid round and round movement for example whirlwind is jewelry cut so it is a round and round movement whirl is a round and round movement so what happened here jeremy wanted to shoot the duck in order to please his father he tried to shoot but he couldn't pull the trigger he waited for the explosion but it didn't happen and what happened to the duck the duck hung in the air for a moment it was balanced between life and death but after that moment it flew away so it escaped the hunters there was no sound except the faint rustle of the grasses jeremy stood there gripping his gun well his father said at last what happened the boy did not ask His lips were trembling. His father asked in the same controlled voice, "Why didn't you shoot?" Jeremy thumped back the safety catch. He stood the gun carefully in the corner of the blind. Because they were so alive, 
he said and burst into tears. So if you take a look at the picture of the gun I've given here, you can see what a safety catch is. A safety catch is a part of the gun. There was no sound except the faint rustle of the grasses. Rustle is the sound caused by movement of the uh, grass. For example, rustle of the leaves. Mo uh, sound caused by movement of the leaves. There was no sound except the faint rustle of the grasses. Jeremy stood there gripping his hand. Jeremy grips his hand and stands there. Well, his father said at last, what happened? His father asked him, what happened? He did not answer. His lips were trembling. His father asked in the same controlled voice, why didn't you shoot? So now his father asked him, why didn't you shoot when you had the perfect chance? You had the perfect chance to shoot the duck, but yet you didn't shoot. Why? Jeremy pumped back the safety catch. So here thumb is used as a verb. To thumb is to press, move or touch something with thumb, with one's thumb. Jeremy thumped back the safety catch. He puts back the safety catch. So he's no longer going to shoot. You put, the, put back the safety catch when you're done hunting, when you're done shooting. He stood the gun carefully in the corner of the blind. So he put back the gun. Because they were so alive, he said and burst into tears. Why didn't he shoot the animals? Why didn't he shoot the birds? Because they were so alive. He didn't shoot the ducks because they were so alive. He didn't want to kill a living creature. That is why he didn't shoot the ducks. And then he burst into tears. Jeremy burst into tears. What do you think the reason is? Jeremy could not shoot the mallard because it was too alive. He couldn't shoot a living creature. He did not want to kill a living creature. Jeremy felt like he lost his chance to please his father as he failed at shooting. That is why he burst into tears. He feels like he could not please his father. He could not win his father's approval. That is why he burst into tears. What happens next? We will find out in the next class. Thank you.